Hello, today I'm going to start with handout 18. In handout 18, we're going to talk about buffers. <clears throat> and buffers are going to be a particular interest, obviously to chemists, but also um, all of you in biology major, uh, neuroscience major, any of these health sciences, if you're looking to go into, even if you're going into um, a life science grad school or even med school, buffers are going to come up a lot for you in the bio sciences. So keep that in mind as we go through this chapter, this unit. And <clears throat> buffers are really interesting solutions. Um, buffers resist changes in pH. A buffer solution changes, resists changes in pH. So if you imagine we have this container here with just water and, and this is one molar solution of HCl. Now you'd expect that HCl, right, when it goes into water, it donates a proton to water because we know HCl, hydrochloric acid, is a very strong acid. That's why the single arrow and it produces the hydronium ion, right, which is going to decrease the pH, and the chloride, which is the product left over after the hydrogen has left. And we know this is a single arrow, and this hydronium product is the responsible for decreasing the pH. So when we add one molar HCl to water, pure water would have a pH of seven, and when we've added the hydrochloric acid, as expected, right, we produce this hydronium, which decreases that pH. And so the pH changes dramatically. In this case, I set a situation where we had five milliliters, right? So just adding that amount, five milliliters of a one molar solution can cause a great change in the pH of just water. But is if instead of water, we have a buffer solution, okay? When we add the same amount of hydrochloric acid, right? This reaction doesn't change. The hydrochloric acid donates a proton to water and makes this hydronium. But now this solution has something inside of it, okay? That we're gonna be discussing in this unit and that resists the change in pH. It changes by less than 5% when we've made the solution a buffer. So when you don't have a buffer, see the difference from seven to 1.3, changes about 80%. When you have a buffer, this is why we we're, we're say that buffers resist changes in pH. You add the same amount of the strong acid, yet look at the difference. In one, without a buffer, it's 1.3 pH. With a buffer, it's 6.8 pH. So that's what we want to talk about. And the relevance or application of this is all our, all our cells, right? All living organisms have a very, very sophisticated system of buffers. Our cells are uh, inside the cell, outside the cell, different types of cell to have different buffer systems that allow those systems, right, to keep that the desired pH. And the stomach has to be at a pH, the cells in your pancreas are at a certain pH, your liver, different systems, right, different organisms, more developed, less developed, have different systems of pH. So it's become, it's a very interesting principle and it is essential for homeostasis so that's kind of why you're going to see it so much in the life sciences and if you take biochemistry buffers are going to be a very uh, predominant concept in biochemistry as well so how what is a buffer right what is it that makes it resist those changes in ph so a buffer is a mixture and it either has a weak acid and an ionic compound that has its conjugate base or a weak base and an ionic compound that contains the weak base's conjugate acid. So it has a weak acid conjugate base pair, right? Or a weak base conjugate acid. 
Now, for the purposes of the explanations, I usually just refer to the weak acid and conjugate base um, pair as I go along, but in a few instances, I'll just remind you that this is exactly the same idea, right? It applies just the same with a weak base and its conjugate acid. And so what does that look like? Um, so for example, acetic acid, right? This is acetic acid and its conjugate base is acetate. Now, remember we had talked about this negative charge, right? And I can't find a bottle that has just acetate. So I can find a bottle that has CH3CO2, right? The acetate combined with sodium and then in solution, this releases the sodium ion and releases your acetate ion. And so that's how you get the acetate in solution. That's why it says an ionic compound that has. So it would be this way, right? This is the ionic compound that has the conjugate base of a weak acid, okay? This is the generic form of writing the acid and the conjugate base, just so you know. Also, I wanted to show you here that I use these abbreviations. I tried getting rid of these abbreviations throughout the handout, um, but just in case I slipped and, and there was a abbreviation that fell through my, my inspection, WA stands for weak acid and CB stands for conjugate base, so the weak acid and its conjugate base. And similarly, WB is weak base and it's conjugate acid. Like I said, I tried to get rid of these in the text, but just in case any slipped by, and I'm pretty sure in the book, they still use this abbreviation. Now we know that most of our weak bases are amines, right? So they have this NH form. And so NH3 is ammonia, which is our most simple form of that weak base and it's conjugate acid, which is ammonium ion. Now, ammonium ion has a charge, right? So I won't be able to find it as it is in a bottle. I would have to do something like NH4Cl. And this is an ionic compound that contains a conjugate acid of a weak base. That's what this is referring to, okay? So just remember, right, you have to find those ions in an ionic compound sometimes to make sense of, of what they're saying or what we're doing here. So based on the on this, on that those two parameters, we're gonna see identify in these three examples if we have a buffer system or not. So we're gonna look at this first example. This is CH3CO2H. Okay. Even if you don't know what this is or you don't recognize it from before, right? Um, the CO2H is always your acid, right? This part you have you you have to have some type of recognition of it. So this hydrogen here would be the one to leave, right? In this acid. So if this is an acid, its conjugate base would be this, right? Now this we can say has a conjugate base because this is a weak acid and i know it's a weak acid because it's an organic acid that co2h makes it a weak acid it's not in the list of strong acids that's for sure so it's going to be weak a weak acid right weak acid has a conjugate base and this is the conjugate base so it has to be a weak acid and an ionic compound that contains the conjugate base NaCl. Well, NaCl has sodium and chloride, but does not have acetate. See this guy right here? It does not have the conjugate base of the weak acid. So no, this is not a buffer system. Here we have hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid is a strong or a weak acid? Strong. Right off the bat, it's strong acid. This cannot be a buffer system. A buffer system is a weak acid with, a con with its conjugate base. This has the product of HCl, but this is a strong acid. This is not an equilibrium. It will not be able to make a buffer system. Let's look at this third one. And this third one can be a little tricky to visualize, but that's kind of why I included it in this handout. Actually, 
I changed it. Uh, on your handout, you have, and we will go over this problem in a little bit, but on your handout, the problem you have is NH4Cl and NH3. Is this a buffer system? This is a buffer system because NH4Cl has NH4 and Cl, right? That's what this has. And NH4 is the conjugate acid of NH3. So NH3 and NH4Cl, this does make a buffer system. Sorry about that typo. We are gonna see this example in a little bit though. How do buffer solutions resist changes in pH? I think this is very an inter very interesting idea and quite clever, really. In a solution, right, an aqueous solution, water, a weak acid and a conjugate base, a weak acid and its pair are an acid and a base that cannot neutralize each other. In the solution, you can have an acid and a base exist, but because these exist in equilibrium, they're not gonna neutralize each other. If you have any other set of acid and base, once an acid sees a base, it neutralizes it, right? It makes water. And then it loses the hydronium or the hydroxide. It decreases the concentration of the acid or the base. But a weak acid and its conjugate pair is going to stay as an acid and stay as a base because they exist at equilibrium and they're not going to neutralize each other. Why is that so useful? Well, because in this solution you have an acid that's ready to neutralize a base and a an base that's ready to neutralize an acid. Any other acid but its conjugate. So if we have, for example, I'm going to label this hand my acid hand this hand, my base hand. Hopefully it sticks and you can see this is my acid hand, this is my base hand. Well, I have a solution, okay? And in my solution, I have these two acids and bases. Now, normally an acid and a base, right? Not a conjugate pair, sees each other and they neutralize each other, they react. In this case, these two exist at equilibrium, right? They're constantly making each other. So they don't neutralize each other. So in a solution, I have an acid, this acid, and this base. And say that I take into the solution and I start adding hydroxide. I add a base to it. Well, this acid is itching to neutralize and react, but it can't neutralize the space, right? Because it's in equilibrium with it. But it sees this and it's like, oh, mom, 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 I can eat this base. And it neutralizes that base as soon as it comes into the reaction. Okay. Now let's say on the other side, let's say that I take that same buffer system, right? That same conjugate acid and base pair. And now I feed it or I put into the solution hydronium ions. Then my base, who's itching to neutralize something, but it can't neutralize this acid because it's at equilibrium with it sees this, ha this acid, right, this hydronium, and it can consume it, right? It, it reacts it. And so it, by consuming that excess hydronium, right, that acid that I'm adding, the pH doesn't change. When I added the hydroxides, the acid consumed it, and so it doesn't alter my pH. When I add the hydronium, my base consumes it, and it doesn't alter the pH. It's like it never went in. Okay, they make it disappear. So that's kind of the beauty of these buffer systems, that you have an acid and a base, again, that can exist at equilibrium without reacting each other, but are ready to consume its opposite, right? The acid will react with a base, and the base will react with an acid, right, to neutralize. They just can't neutralize each other. So I hope my little ham puppet demo helped in something. Um, understand the idea of how these buffers work. And I had my little Pac-Man caricature, right? The conjugate base, see here, I, I think I left some of these. My conjugate base can consume the acid. My weak acid can consume any base that's added into my solution.
Now, here comes a very important part that can be a little bit challenging. How do buffers resist changes in pH? But how do we express my hand puppets but using chemical reactions? Okay, so when you have a strong acid, you add acid to a solution, right, to water, what we expect is that acid to that proton is gonna go into water, donate that proton, make this product, and hydronium, right? This hydronium is therefore going to affect, right, the auto ionization of water that we studied a couple of units ago. And so this hydronium is gonna mess with this equilibrium and it's going to cause a decrease in your pH. But if there's a buffer, say acetic acid and acetate as an example, so acetic acid and acetate would be its conjugate base in that solution, this is the acid, this is the base. When I add acid, it's going to be neutralized by the acetate base. Okay, so the base reacts with the hydronium, and this is a base. All we're doing is moving that H plus. That's all that's happening here, right? H plus goes from here to there. Now that H plus goes from the hydronium to the base. And so the hydronium restores the conjugate base as the acid, and it loses that proton, so it's H2O water. Neither one of these products has an effect on pH, right? Water's neutral, right? It's not hydronium, it's not hydroxide. So it, it keeps the pH intact, it doesn't change the pH. And it does that because the conjugate base is consuming that hydronium ion and not letting it stay in solution. Similar way, if I add a strong base, like sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide and water, right? This is liquid. We know that sodium hydroxide is going to dissociate into sodium and hydroxide. And this guy right here is our base. That's what's going to alter the equilibrium of water and increase our pH. So in the same buffer system of acetic acid and the acetate, this is the base, this is the acid, this is a base, so it's going to react with the acid, right? Acids and bases react with each other. Acid and acid, nothing. Base and base, nothing. Acid and base. So that acid in your buffer system is going to consume the hydroxide. So this hydrogen is gonna move in with the hydroxide when it lost its hydrogen, it becomes the acetate, right, which is already in there, and water, H plus OH is H2O. So the weak acid consumes the hydroxide in that solution. That's how it does it. Now, if you can imagine, right, if I keep adding hydroxide, adding hydroxide, adding hydroxide, this reaction, right, is one-sided. It keeps producing the conjugate, it's gonna, you're gonna get to a point where you've added so much hydroxide that you run out of the acid to react it and neutralize it. And that's the buffer capacity. If you keep adding base up to, a, you can keep adding base up to a point where all of a sudden your pH is gonna jump, either up or down, depending what you're adding, right? And that's because you've actually run out of the acid or run out of the base to neutralize what you're adding. And then from there on out, whatever it is, hydroxide or hydronium, is going to cause a change in the pH. So a buffer is good until you've run out of weak acid or weak base, and then that's your buffer capacity. So let's practice writing those reactions. I know this is, this is actually probably just this idea here, more than the math that we could see, this is the part that's going to cause a little more grief. So it says, write a reaction that occurs when hydronium is added to a buffer of HNO2 and NO2. So looking at this, these two, this is your buffer, right? HNO2 is your acid, and this NO2 is your base, right? It's what happens to the acid without the, hydro without the proton. Now, 
These two had coexist in the buffer and I've added acid. Will acid react with acid? No, acid will react with the base. So then I can write the H3O will react with the nitrite. All acid-base equations are the same. This is a neutralization reaction. All we're doing is transferring that proton. This guy has them, this guy does not. This is going, the acid is going to transfer that proton over. So what's the result? This has one less hydrogen. The oxygen, right? And because it lost the hydrogen with a plus, it also loses that plus sign, and now we're in water, so you know that's liquid. And that hydrogen now goes to live, which the NO2, so it takes care of that negative charge. Okay, this is what happens when you add acid to this buffer system. That's it. Write the reaction that occurs when hydroxide is added to the buffer system of the HNO2 and NO2. Like I said before, this is your acid, this is your base. So when I add hydroxide, that's base. It's going to react not with your base, it's going to react with your acid. Acid base. So acid and base. It's a neutralization reaction. That's why I only write one arrow. Acid, base. Okay, every single one of these reactions are exactly the same thing. A hydrogen plus goes from one side to another, one side to another. Okay, that's all that happens. Now you need to identify and remember that base neutralizes acid, acid neutralizes base. And that's, that's the whole gist of this, okay? Let's look at this next example. Consider the weak base conjugate acid buffer solution of the ammonia and ammonium chloride. What reaction takes place when hydronium is added to the buffer? So when I add ammonium chloride, I'm really adding the ammonium. And ammonium is the conjugate acid of ammonia, right? And this is the base, weak base conjugate acid. So when I add hydronium, hydronium is acid. It's going to react with the base. So it's going to be the base. And the acid I'm adding and the same thing acid donates to the base right that hydrogen that proton goes moves in here and you have what's left behind which is hydrogen less hydrogen and no charge right that's the reaction what reaction takes place when hydroxide is added? This is base. So when I add base, it's reacting with the acid. NH4. Reacts with the base. And so the acid donates a proton. And the base accepts it. Notice that in every one of these products, in every one of these reactions, water is a product and water is neutral. That doesn't change the pH. So if I just had hydronium in the products, that would be decreasing the pH. If I, all, if I had hydroxide in the products, that would be increasing pH. But when I have water in the product, that's an indicator of neutralization, right? It's becoming neutralizing that hydronium or that hydroxide. And that's why it resists a change in pH. Uh, 
If we want to calculate the pH of a buffer solution, we can use this equation called Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. And it's going to be very useful, and you're going to see it again in other um, chemistry courses. Um, pH of a buffer solution equals the pKa of the acid, right? So the p, anytime you see a p, that's a minus log. So the pKa is the minus log of the Ka. So the Ka is the equilibrium constant for the acid plus the log of the base over the acid. Always, always base over acid, always, always pKa. Okay, that's the way the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation works. So let's see a few examples where we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So the first problem, number four, is using calculate the pH. Uh, a buffer solution contains 0.25 molar acetic acid and 0.25 molar sodium acetate. What is the pH? So it has the concentration of acid, 0.25 molar. Notice I'm not even writing what acid it is. I, it's just acid, right? That's what it is, acid. It's a buffer system because this is acetic acid and this has the acetate. So the acetate is going to be the base, the conjugate base of the weak acid, and the concentration of that is 0 0.500 molar. Don't get thrown, up by this, thrown off by the sodium thing, right? Sodium acetate is because when sodium acetate goes into water, it makes sodium and the acetate. And this guy, right, that's the conjugate base of this acid. This acid, sorry, that H does not go there, it goes here. That's the acid and that's the conjugate base. And it gives you the acetate, it's asking what is the pH and it gives you the Ka of the acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. Henderson-Hasselbalch says the pH of a buffer system is the pKa plus the log of the concentration of base over the concentration of acid. PKA, right, is the minus log of the Ka. Anytime you see a P, right, that P before the Ka, it means minus log. So it's minus log of whatever is next of the P. So then the PKA is minus the log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. The pKa is 4.74. So now I have the pKa, I have the concentration of base and the concentration of acid. Now it's a matter of substituting. 4.74 plus the log, the concentration of base over the concentration of acid. Okay concentration of base over acid. Now, I know some of you get thrown off by these logs and stuff, so let's do it step by step. Okay. The pH here is 4.74 plus log. Let's solve what's in the parentheses. 0.5 over 0.25 is 2. So then you have the log of 2. So the next step is, what is the log of 2? So you use your calculator where it says log, and then in the parentheses you press, you put 2 in, and you get that this pH is 4.74 plus 0.301. And so 4.74 plus 0.301 is about 5.0. And I kept two sig figs here because and I'm pretty sure I fixed this in your handout, right? It's just two sig figs. That's the least amount, right? So two sig figs. So this is the pH.
of this buffer system. So once this pH is at buffer five, about buffer five, I'm sorry, about pH five, you can add acid to it, you could add base to it, and it will barely change the pH until all of your conjugate, your weak acid and conjugate base have reacted and then it'll jump in either direction. Okay, so uh, let's look at this other example. This is the pH of a buffer solution containing one molar sodium biphosphate and 0.35 um, sodium phosphate. Oh, yeah. So what we're gonna do here is before I show you this, again, I wanna show you how this is an acid and a base. So this reaction here, so this ionic compound, thank you, right? This, when it goes into water, makes sodium and it makes this H2PO4. And this kind of looks weird, but if you remember, this has a hydrogen. So this is, has the ability to donate a proton. The other compound we have is, and when this is in water, it releases two sodium ions and this ion. Now, look at the relationship between these two, okay? Even if you've never seen them before, you don't know what they are, they look super weird as an acid or a base, and that's what you're trying to find. This here has one more proton than this. That's the only difference here. This has one more proton. So if this loses the proton, it becomes this guy. And if this guy gains a proton, it becomes that guy. So if this loses, then this would be an acid. This gains, this would be a base. So this is your acid and this is your base. So when I go here and I say, what is my concentration of base? I'm gonna look for this compound. And that's 0.35 molar. And my concentration of the acid is 1.00 molar. In your handout I added an extra sig fig here. So it wants to know the pH and it's given the Ka 6.2 times 10 to the negative 8. So using Henderson Hasselbalch, the pH equals the pKa plus the log of base over acid, always base over acid. So for doing that, I need the pKa. The pKa is based on the Ka. So that's the Ka of the acid, therefore the pKa is 7.21. Okay, now I have the pKa, I have the concentration of base, the concentration of acid, and I can substitute. So pH is going to be the pKa 7.21 plus the log of base, 0 0.350 molar, over the acid. So 0 0.350 over 1, so the pH 7.21 plus the log of 0 0.350. And I plug in the log of 3.350, 0 .0, and that gives me that the pH is 7.21 plus negative 0 0.4559. So my pH is 6.8 after looking at sig figs. Okay? So that's how you use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation.
It's pretty straightforward. There's two big challenges here, right? Identifying who the acid is and who the base is so you know what concentration goes where. And remembering to get the pKa, right, based on the Ka. Now when you're doing an acid uh, buffer system, one of the critical things is in labs, right, as you go through different labs in both biology and in chemistry, you're going to have to make buffers, okay? Part of making buffers is choosing what your compounds are going to be. So I'm going to walk you through a few steps on how to make your own buffer. And this is more like the calculations and the theory behind it. And then you'd have to mix your compounds, right, and do that part. So choosing how to make your, your, your buffer. Now, first you need to choose a weak acid or a weak base that has a pKa that's close to the pH of the buffer solution that you want to make. And that's a very important statement because for different reaction solutions, experiments, right, if you're growing bacteria or fungi or uh, HeLa cell lines, um, stem cell lines, you're going to have a requirement, a buffer requirement, right? Some uh, different pHs that you want to touch. Um, some compounds could be um, toxic to the cell line that you're using and so on and so forth. So it's very important that at least in the part of the pH, right, the chemistry of it, that when you're looking for a buffer system, the best way to do that is identify the pH that you need to keep and then find an acid, an acid, right, a weak acid that has a pKa around the pH. So I wrote a couple of examples here on your handout. If I want a solution that has a pH of 3.35, right, I can look. Now, this table that you have here is just a small excerpt of a really big table. In fact, you can find more of these equilibrium constants for acids, or the Ka tables, um, on Appendix H of your textbook. And remember, that textbook is online. So this is just a summary because it's a huge table, and I just put here a few that we're going to be using as examples. So if you want based on the examples that I wrote here, uh, a buffer that has a pH of 3.35, I'm gonna look at my list, right? And I'm gonna find the one that has the closest pH to that. So in this case, I have one that's exactly that. That would be HNO2, right? That would be my acid. And so my conjugate would be the NO2, right? Now remember that to provide this nitrite, I would have to put it in as an ionic compound because this ion won't exist on its own in a bottle. So what I would have to do is get a bottle of NaNO2, for example. And so it would, my solution, my buffer system would be HNO2, NNO2, but the way to provide that is by adding NaNO2, right? That would be how you would see it. Okay, let's, another example, say that you want a pH of 4.24 well in this case right you're looking down and you don't have an exact 4.24 but you're going to pick the closest right the pKa closest to your pH so for 4.24 I would say it's this guy right here and so your combo right your buffer would be made of the acid and its conjugate base, which would be, right, with the hydrogen, without the hydrogen. And keep in mind that if you see something like that's the same thing, right? It's just how we would deliver that, that ionic compound. So with that in mind, if you can see, these two examples are very different. In this example, I found a buffer system that has a pK exactly of the pH. This, this example, my pK is close to the pH that I want. So that's exactly what the two methods that I'm describing next are going to help you figure out how to calculate that. So let's say that you have a system with a pH that is exactly the same. Well, 
if you have a pH that is exactly the same, like that in, in that first example with the nitrous acid, say, and I have another example here, right, with a pH of 4.74. If you have exactly the P, the pK matches exactly your pH, so here I have 4.74 in my list. That is CH3COOH, right? And it's conjugate base CH3COO, right? So if you can imagine, this is the pH, right? In Henderson Hasselbeck, if I keep the pH, right, and the pKa, right, I want these two numbers. This is the pKa and this is the pH. But if I put this in the context of Henderson Hasselbeck, that means that, right, this would be the pH equals the pKa plus the log of base over acid. And if my pH and my pK, I want to get it so that this is exactly the same as this, right? My pH is exactly the same as my pK, and I don't want to change anything. I need to make sure that this value here equals zero. So the way that I could do that is if the concentration of my base is exactly the same as the concentration of my acid. Let's try that. Okay, let's see what I what I'm see if you can uh, agree with what I'm talking about. So, in this case, my pH matches my pKa. So when I put it in Henderson Hasselbeck, I don't want anything to change my value of pKa. That's actually the pH I want. So I need to make sure that whatever I'm adding adds up. This is zero. So would that work? So, 4.74. Actually, I'm not going to start here. I'm going to start with my pKa, my pH is the pKa plus the log. Now, assign an arbitrary number. I'm not gonna do this for real, but let's say that my concentration of acid is 0.5 and my concentration of base is 0.5. I'm just giving you an example, right? The important thing is that your acid and base are the same concentration. So then that's the log of 0.5 over 0.5. Now this is one, so it's the log of one. And what's the log of one? Well, any number raised to zero equals one. So this ends up being zero. So then my pKa is my pH, okay? So if you want your, if you found a buffer that your pKa is exactly the same as your pH, when you're making that buffer, just make sure that the concentration of acid and base is the same. And that's how you keep the pH equal to the pKa. That's the first example. This is the first method. Now the second method is if I'm not that lucky, right? And it's close, like in this case, right? This is close. Now, I gave you a different example here. What if your pH, you want a buffer with a pH of 4.5. Now, pH of 4.5, when I look at my list, the closest thing, right? would be that 4.74, that same buffer. But I don't want 4.74, I want it to be a pH of 4.5. So although it is the same buffer system, now I want a very different thing. I don't want the pH to be the same as the pKa. So what I can do is I can then adjust. I want to find out what my proportion of acid and base needs to be for me to get my pH of 4.5. So, sorry. My pH is 4.5 equals my pKa plus the log of base over acid. 
Well, I want to know what the proportion here is. What proportion of base to acid do I need to have for my pH of this buffer to be 4.5? So then I'm going to simplify this equation to find this base to acid re relationship. So minus 4.74 on both sides. negative 0 0.24. Now I want to find out what the base to acid proportion is. So I need to get rid of this log. How do I get rid of a log? The anti-log. The anti-log means 10 to the negative 0.24 equals the proportion of base to acid. And so I can go to my calculator, right? And I do this, the opposite. This isn't the log. This is the opposite of the log in my calculator. So it's the second function, negative 0.24. And so the proportion is 0.57. Uh, depends on how many sig figs, right? Let's, since I already put, wrote 0.57, let me write the five. So this is the proportion. What does this mean? This means that for every one of acid, I want 0.575 of the base. So if I make a one molar solution of acid, I want to combine that with 0.575 molar of the base, okay? That's how I can do that. If I have this proportion, I can double it or triple it as long as I keep that proportion. And so if I make a buffer with this proportion, I will be able to keep my pH at 4.5, combining these two compounds. So that's how you solve. This is how you, the other method when you don't have a pKa that matches exactly your pH. So, I hope that helps. Just remember also that all of this also applies to a weak base with its conjugate acid. So in this reaction, right, this is your weak base and this is your conjugate acid. So I can use Henderson Hasselbalch to calculate the pH of a buffer system that has this weak base and a conjugate acid. But the equation is exactly the same. It doesn't change. So the pH is going to be the pKa. The Ka is for this conjugate acid. So I need to use the, con the, P the Ka of the conjugate acid to calculate my pKa plus the log of always the base over the acid. So this equation stays the same. I just need to make sure that I use the Ka instead of a Kb. We don't never use Kbs here. Okay, so you need to use the Ka of the conjugate acid. In your worksheet, um, there is a problem with this pair to calculate the pH. So I didn't include one on your handout, but I'll go over it in the next video when I talk about worksheet 18.